Okay, hello everybody and a warm welcome to this session in today's conference, which is themed around bouncing back. My name is Donna Alcock. I'm the Strategy Implementation Manager for Great Britain at Tourism Island. I'm also one of the ITT directors and a really proud Future You ambassador. So one of the reasons I'm particularly pleased uh, and really humbled today actually to be hosting this session is because bouncing back is something um, that I've experienced a number of times throughout my career as well for a number of reasons. But um, just one thing I would say before um, we move in on to introductions in the panel is that um, however difficult and ugly and uncomfortable they've been at the time, um, they've mostly always all led to some kind of positive change. So um, I'm confident today that, that between us, we can hopefully share some of that inspiration, some of those tips, um, and end the session with some positive takeouts for anybody who might be experiencing challenges at the moment or or going through some kind of bounce back. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce me to my three excellent panelists today. Um, guys, if you'd like to introduce yourselves um, and also tell us a little bit about why, why this panel was important to you today. So I'm gonna hand over to you first, Emma. Hi, my name's Emma Mail. Uh, I am working for CUNAMED at the moment as head of sales. Um, but I would like to share my experiences. Um, I've been in travel for 17 odd years, but the last year or so, I've been through two job losses. Um, and I feel that with some of the things that I've been through, I can share some advice and some help. And I think it's just really nice to support each other in this time. Thank you, Emma. And how about you, Kenny? So, hi guys, I'm Kenny, um, Kenny Smith. Um, I'm the Head of Global Partnerships for OTT, which is the global leader for online travel training. So the same as Emma and yourself, um, I'm really pleased to be here today because I believe in really the importance of the bounce back ability. So within your own career and also personal. So I'm, I'm really pleased to be here today. Um, I've been in the travel industry for the same as Emma, 17 years. So working my way all the way up from a, uh, an apprentice, a well-known tour operator. So um, and yeah, I've been on the roller coaster as well, Emma, so I totally get that. Um, but yeah, looking forward to talking about the opportunities and the importance of the bounce back. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, and hi, hi, welcome, Errol. Hey guys, hey, and, and hi everybody, wherever you are watching in the world today. Uh, my name is Errol Lawson. Um, I'm, a, I'm an author, a best-selling author of three books. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business owner based in Birmingham. And bouncing back for me is, uh, is, is particularly an important subject because go, growing up in inner city Birmingham, um, being homeless at 16 years old, uh, being in a really challenging kind of uh, environment during my teenage years, having to turn that around and today um, build the business that I built today and become the person that I'm still becoming in many ways. And um, I've had to apply certain, certain principles and, and skills that have helped me to turn my life around that I reckon are relevant to anybody facing any kind of challenge during this kind of COVID season, coming back and bouncing back. Thank you. So that's really interesting. I think we've got a really good blend um, of experiences of, of what we can what we can hopefully talk through today and and help others. So so just going back to what you mentioned there, Errol, um, what do you think are some of the challenges or, or the people that you work with that people people might be experiencing right now or, or trying to bounce back with, particularly with everything that's going on? Uh, great question, Dan. I think the biggest thing right now is the uncertainty that everyone's facing, not knowing what the real impact is going to be on personal finances, on their industries, and whether people will start coming out again, and if they do come out, what will that look like? How do we prepare for it? What does it mean for us? And as we've seen even recently, many companies, I think it was Cafe Rouge, um, have, have closed down, and, and other companies are closing down because of, because of the impacts of COVID. And, and I think the challenge for us all is to look at this from a, a, a position or a perspective of opportunity to see this challenge is actually uh, and look inside the challenge and ask ourselves what is the blessing in disguise what is the opportunity here 
what might there be here that I can learn from this and take into my next position, my next um, opportunity? How can I somehow maximize this and turn it around? It's a mindset shift. Absolutely, yes. And, and Kenny and Emma, you, you mentioned before there about some challenges you'd had yourselves, whether that be redundancy in the past, for an example, and, and that might be something that, well, well, we know several million people are going through right now. What were some of the uh, feelings that you experienced in that, in that situation? I'm going to come to you first, Kenny. Um, and what were some of the things you did in that situation, sort of in retrospect, that, that you would encourage others to do if they're experiencing that right now? Absolutely. Um, I think reflection is key um, in that main instance, because sometimes you can feel very down it can affect you mentally it can affect you physically and i personally believe that sitting back and just taking stock reflecting um and setting realistic objectives for yourself because it can be someone in you you don't want to get out of bed or you feel like you possibly if you're applying for many many jobs and you're not seeing the the benefits of them applications um it's a tough industry it's a tough world out there and we've all had it we've all had really bad days but we've all had really really good days as well so i was made redundant um a few years ago and i'd applied for quite a few jobs and re received a phone call from from my boss um and was asked to go in and i used those skills i sat down before i actually went into that one and i really thought about right okay so what was i when i was at my best what was i doing um so what what did i do when i when i was absolutely fantastic in my previous interviews how did i come across um and actually taking those those hard challenges that you feel like that you you can't move on or you can't be as optimistic about the future and turning them into positives and really implementing that change and feeling positive about yourself in your own in your own kind of like mental attitude as well and and within your work capacity and your career yeah thank you thank you for sharing that and just emma on that on that note and something kenny mentioned just there about when you're when you're applying for jobs and um i noticed you nodding just there i mean what what is that something you've experienced and was there something that that you tried to to try and get some sort of extra cut through and think think beyond the box in that yeah so as kenny said it's so frustrating every day you're literally sat in front of a laptop applying for hundreds of jobs you end up just doing this the speedy linkedin apply because you've just been through so many different application forms um but luckily my husband is a videographer and and helped me basically film a virtual cv which was amazing so basically we sat in our back garden because it was locked down <laughs> And um, yeah, I just kind of talked through my experiences and my different job roles. Um, and we put it all into a really lovely, um, short but sweet and really professional CV, which I put out on LinkedIn. And honestly, it was the best thing I did. You know, it was quite, I felt vulnerable doing it. I felt a bit embarrassed, a bit like, oh, I'm putting myself out there. But actually the feedback I got, um, so many people were so encouraging and, and the calls that I got because of it, like, I've actually now got a job through the fact that I did that um, and just lots of people just being really supportive um, and I think you know that helped cut through the noise obviously not everyone has that option but you know I think there are lots of means and ways of of cutting through the noise and just trying to make yourself kind of I don't know just just to get out yourself in a different way if that makes sense but it is yeah it, it is you've just got to sort of I don't know for me also another reason why um i felt i could be more positive was getting out every day running or walking um you know just taking a moment for yourself to sort of stop and try and get the positivity back because it is really hard it is yeah and i think that's a really good point you know in terms of keeping yourself well as well just physically and mentally because um, when things are difficult, it, that's almost the most important time to look after yourselves, but often often when you neglect. But I think if you're not in a good place, that's when it can, can come across 
uh, when when you need your energy to be on its A game. So I guess a lot of that also does come down to, to mindset, which is something you're you're such an expert in as well, Errol. In terms of when people might be feeling a bit down on confidence or or feeling like those opportunities are not are not coming into fruition. What, what, tell us a bit more about the sort of work that you do around sort of mindset and ways people could, could try and re reframe those possibilities. And I guess the hardest bit I found in the past is when, when you're stuck in that kind of, um, the crux of that situation, um, you feel like better days are quite a while away. It's not easy, you know, when you feel like you're stuck in a pit and you can't get out, it's not easy. Um, Kenny touched on something earlier. We talked about setting goals, you know, and um, oftentimes you know, we can look back at times in our life we've set goals or written a vision statement or a, a personal vision board on the wall. And, and most of the time during crisis, during difficult times, we lose sight of vision. The first thing that seems to go out the window is any sense of hope. And I want to encourage people that actually, you know what, get that vision document out again, get that vision board out again. Start setting those goals again. Most of you would know how to set goals. You've written goals down. You've heard about Anthony Robbins and those things. Start setting goals again and start believing in yourself. You've got to really believe that everything you've done up to this point in your life, all of the experience you've had, all the skills you've developed, all you've learned over the last years of your life has not been in vain. And as hard as it seems now to seem like it has any meaning, actually, you've got to realize, you've got to find that inner strength there are, going to be, there are times in life where we look around us and there's no one to encourage us. There's no one to give us any kind of affirmation or upliftment. And it's in those moments the real you comes to the service. That's when the real leadership in you arises. I really believe that, that every one of us, as tough as this might seem right now, and, and history has shown, even as human beings, that we have a way of just being really innovative and finding solutions out of nothing. And you've got to believe you too can find a solution out of nothing. You can do this. You can turn this around. Even if it means a complete change or doing something completely different, all that you've done is not in vain. And I love what Emma said, creating that video CV, finding a different way to do it and putting herself out there so she's, she's available, she's accessible. And guys, you gotta, you got to grab onto things like that. Start with believing in yourself. Shake yourself off. It's not the end of the world. The best is still yet to come. Think this too will pass. We got to believe and get yourself focused again. Whatever you focus on is going to, mag going to be magnified. If you focus on the problems, focus on the issues, the, all the negativity, guess what happens? You magnify that in your life. But if you choose to focus on the positive and what is possible for you in this season, you'll see it happen. I really believe that. So don't give up whatever you do. That's great to hear and really inspiring as well. And, and just to come back to you on just another point on that, um, some people that are tuning in today might be, um, for example, leaving, about to leave higher education or at college or university at the moment. Um, and they might be listening to us right now set thinking, um, these are sort of great tips, but what if I don't have that experience yet? What if I don't have other transferable skills or I haven't had much of, of a working life yet? I mean, one of the things I was thinking of was around just just making the most of any experience you can get, whether it's volunteering, whether it's clubs you're part of, whether it's... Um, you know, just just communication skills, working in the supermarket, but but things which would stand you in good stead. What what sorts of things do you uh, talk talk with with when you're you're working with students and, and people in colleges that might not Fantastic. yet have that experience? Fantastic. You know, I started my first company at 19 years old, and I started it. I was volunteering. I, I basically did it. I created a volunteer a team of volunteers, a community of people. We went out and did an event voluntarily and it built up and it became what it is. So you've got to ask yourself, where can I utilize my skills, talents now anyway? Where can I get some experience? Where can I serve? How can I help out? Where can I apprentice? Have I got a, is it like my mom's friend's friend who's got a business who does this or does that? I can just go and be in the office and, and just get in the environment. You've got to get out there, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is you've got to, you've got to choose the right friends. Like my dad all said to me, he said, son, if you mingle with dogs, son, you'll catch fleas, right? Or show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. 
And you, I want to encourage you guys, examine your friendship circles now and be really, really sort of, uh, not harsh isn't the right word, but be really particular about the kind of people you surround yourself with. You will rise to the level of the quality of the conversations the people around you are having. You're the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. If the people around you are all talking about negativity and pessimistic and there's no hope and nothing will change and we're going to hell in the handbasket, guess what? That's, what's gonna, that's where your mind's going to go. But if you surround yourself with people who are talking about possibility and success and achievement, attainment, accomplishment, making a mark, making a difference, making an impact, some way, somehow, Listen, you're going you're gonna to feed off that. You're going to inspire each other. And you, there's two key things, Donna. You've got to, yes, get out there and serve somewhere, some way, somehow. Number two, analyze your friendship circles and surround yourself with what I call the multiplier friends. Who, When you're around them, you feel like you're 10 foot tall. Your chest comes out, your chin comes up. You feel like you can take on the world around them. Those are the people you need in your circle in a time of crisis. So important. Absolutely. Uh, and just, uh, just a couple of things on that as well. I think when I was in that situation, there was two levels of that. I kind of, I needed to be able to talk to friends that were in the same boat as me because I had that sort of relatability. But equally, I also needed those friends that were completely removed from my situation to sort of give it that fresh perspective. And the second thing um, from what you said there about sort of going out and serving is uh, another thing I, I have learned in reflection is, you know, not to get hung up on job titles and, and what that role's called and what that role pays and things like that. Because, you know, potentially there's also a lot of senior people out there now, likewise, that might be worried about how does that look for their career if they're going for that role? Does it, you know, it, things aren't linear anymore. So I think, as you've all said, it's about looking for those opportunities and outside of the box when they don't necessarily have the, the, the guys that you expect them to have. And I guess just, um, just conscious of time here, but, but Errol just gave some great points that, but there. But, but, but Kenny, um, you know, do you have anything to add on kind of any, any messages or, or bits that we haven't covered today in terms of, of, of people looking to, to bounce back or, or make a change and, or, or simply feel more positive right now? Absolutely, Errol, thank you. That was inspiration to me even though. So thank you very much, it was fab. I loved listening to that. Um, so, but no, my, my main thing is keep it simple. So move towards the future, as Errol was saying. Um, and realize you're not the first person to be scared or the first person to be in this boat. Um, use those people around you, whether that's peers, um, whether that's family and friends, and absolutely yeah, we'll have the right people around you. So, but you have to take ownership of your own decisions. So obviously I work for an online training provider and marketing subscription provider, and we're global. We work in various different countries and we have many many travel professionals come into us every single week from different areas of the world that are trying to really really input more knowledge into their into their own cv to further themselves to educate themselves on not just destinations airlines tour operators but newer courses like the courses that iata offer on the online travel training site um so and there's there's loads of abil ability to actually train and upskill yourself, um, whether that's in your own time or within your professional career. And I think it's hugely important um, for you to, when you're within a career, um, to know that, that kind of like that you are always going to be learning something. Yeah. So when one door closes, a door is ready to open. It's, you've just got to find that door. So there's one waiting for you to walk straight into you've just got to walk in there, jazz hands, get it out and, and be fabulous. So, um, and just prove yourself worth and know that you are worth that and be gentle with yourself. Don't yeah. give yourself too much of a hard time. Yeah. And Emma, Emma, your thoughts around that as well, just before we close. Yeah, I was just going to say, actually, sort of just my personal experience, I've actually ended up, I took a farm job in between finding my next role in travel and exactly what Kenny said you know every role or every experience will help you and and you know broaden your horizon so 
you know, even if you feel embarrassed or whatever it is, um, you know, every, every door or every, you know, opportunity opens the next door. So actually I've been working at a farm and it's made me realize how good I am with people. And it's, it's made me a much more positive person because I've been outside in the fresh air, um, dealing with people. And then the next thing I get this other job in travel. So I do believe, you know, don't be embarrassed by anything. Don't be too big for anything. Uh, stay positive be the best person you can be and things will, will happen for you. Well, thank you so much. I, I actually think this is something we could talk about for, for, for much longer. There's some great takeouts there, even around, you know, the practicalities, around mindset, around training, um, around confidence. Um, and we've not even touched on, on other things. You know, there are other sessions today about mentorship and CVs and, 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 and people that will be in different scenarios that we didn't even get to cover. But, but hopefully there's some really practical takeouts from that. So, so thank you very much for sharing those and thank you for your, for your honesty as well. Um, and I, I wish you, you all the best uh, in the future and all the best to everybody who's watching today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.